Algebra. Why is it so important? In this video, we're going to take a look at the basics. Firstly, I want you guys to think of a number. I want you to double it, add two, and then divide your number by two. Is your answer one larger than the original number you were thinking of? Well, we can use algebra to prove why that's the case. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll show you. The world around us is full of patterns and unknowns. We looked at the patterns and sequences, but how about the unknown world around us? Well, algebra allows us to use letters and symbols, traditionally using the alphabet, whether it's the English alphabet or the Greek alphabet, it doesn't really matter, to describe the unknown world around us. So where is algebra used in real life? Well, first, you guys have seen it all before on the news, for example, you always have economists and statisticians on describing certain events, modeling situations currently, for example, inflation, and predicting the future. This is a multivariable problem, so they use lots of algebra to describe that. Another multivariate problem is the weather. The weather is super complicated, super unpredictable, so in order for mathematicians to calculate weather patterns, they need to use heavy, heavy algebra. Something a little bit more simple, you know, recipes, ratios, proportions, these all use algebra. One more for you guys is ecology. Ecology is the study of organisms and how they interact with the world around them. For example, you might have heard of predator-prey models. Mathematicians here use differential equations, which involves heavy, heavy algebra to describe these situations. Let's start off by looking at this square. This square has side length y. So remember, it's an unknown length. It could be one, two, I don't know, but we're gonna generalize some situations. What would the perimeter of this square be? Now, perimeter means the distance around the shape. So y, 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 y. Tell me why. You might be asking why am I even asking this question? You'll see in a bit. So the perimeter, will be the addition of all of these sides. Now, it's in the language. I have y, one of them. I'm going to add another, and another, and another. I have 4y. So the perimeter here is 4y. I could have done this another way. Because I know these are all the same side, I could have just said it's y times 4. So I could have just said y times 4, which then indicates that 4 times y, or y times 4, is just the same as 4y. So in algebra, we write the number first, always, and then the letter. We call this number the coefficient. It's the coefficient of whichever letter we're talking about. So 4 is the coefficient of y in this case. So for now, we know that when we multiply in algebra, we don't need to write the multiplication symbol, we just write the number first. How about areas? First, let's take a look at a real example with a number. So what's the area of a square with side length 4? Well, you should know that we do the base length times the height. So we do 4 times 4. Now, we all know that's 16. But I could have written this 4 times 4, a number multiplied by itself. We should be thinking about indices. This is the same as 4 squared. So what happens when we deal with unknowns this time? Let's go back to y. So the area will be the base length times the height. So it'll be y times y. And since we cannot simplify it, so before we had 4 times 4, we knew that was 16. The only way we can simplify this is by writing y squared. You might be asking, you just said with multiplication, you don't need to write the times. You can write y, y, but we would replace that with y squared. So in this case, the perimeter, and this is a generalized statement, would be 4y, and the area is y squared. Taking a look at some specific examples, here I have a square or side length 2. If I wanted the perimeter, I know it's just 4 times the length, so 4 times 2, 8. Area is, you just square one of the lengths, 2 squared is 4. How about for this one? We have the perimeter is 4 times one of the side lengths, would be 24. What's the area? It's 6 squared, 36. Keep in mind, for both of these questions, I haven't put units here. Let's take a look at expanding brackets and how it links to shapes. So on the board, I have a rectangle that has been split up into two rectangles. This rectangle has side length 1 and 3. This rectangle has side length 6x and 3. So it's a general situation 
but specific to a rectangle with these lengths. I'm going to find the area. So if we look at this area here, it would be this side length, 1, times this side length, 3. So 1 times 3, which is just 3. For this rectangle, it will be this side length, 6x, multiplied by this length, 3. Now, in algebra, we always multiply the like terms because remember I said before, you don't have to write the multiplication symbol, right? But we wouldn't write this. We wouldn't write 6x and then 3. That doesn't make sense. Nor would we write the 3 in front and say 3, 6, x. That doesn't make sense. We're multiplying them. 6 times 3. So it's not 36x. It is 18x. So if I wanted to work out the total area of this rectangle, I would do 18x plus 3. So the total area is 18x plus 3. Now, let's look at the larger rectangle, because if I looked at this whole length times this whole length, it should give me this exact same area. So, what is this length if this is 6x and this is 1? Well, you would tell me you just need to add those two together. So, this whole length is 6x plus 1. So, we have 6x plus 1. That's this length here. Then... I need to multiply it by 3. So I'm going to multiply it by 3. Now there's a problem with writing it like this. If you read it as it is, I'm doing bid mass, remember? You would do the multiplication first. So I'm just doing 3 times 6x, and then the 1 is at the end. There's a problem with that, because I said the area is this full length times 3. So I also have to do 1 times 3. The way we address that is we add a bracket like this. And this value equals 18x plus 3 from above. And here we can see how multiplying out brackets work. We do 3 times 6x, which was this, gives us 18x. And 3 times the 1, which was this bit, gave us 3. So we're multiplying out brackets. We take the term on the outside of the bracket and we multiply it to the terms on the inside. Let's practice some examples. Let's expand these. So we're going to do 2 times 3x, so we're going to do 2 times 3, which is 6, then x, plus 2 times 2, which is 4. Next one, minus 4 times 5x. Now be careful, this is a positive 5x, we just don't need to write the plus at the beginning of a sentence. So, minus 4 times plus 5. Minus and plus makes negative. 4 times 5 is 20x. Then we have minus 4 times minus 1. And I made a video about why two negatives make a positive. Minus and minus makes positive. 4 times 1 is 4. Finally, we have two brackets, two sets of brackets, but they are split up by this plus. So we just need to expand these and these separately, and then we're going to simplify. So we're doing 3 times x. Now, 3 times x, there's nothing to simplify there. We just don't need to write the multiplication symbol in between. It's just 3x. Then we've got 3 times 4. 3 times 4 gives us 12. Over here, we have a positive 5 times 6. 5 times 6 gives me positive 30. Don't forget the x. Then we've got 5 times minus 5. Positive, negative makes negative. 5 times 5 is 25. Now we have to simplify. So we do something known as collecting the like terms. I have a 3x and a positive 30x. So if I have 3, so... With my students, sometimes I like to describe this x as eggs. If I have three eggs and I add 30 eggs, how many eggs do I have? We have 33. 3 plus 30 is 33 eggs. And then here we have 12 minus 25. What's 12 minus 25? It's minus 
13. So far, I've been showing you guys how to expand brackets. So when you have a bracket, you multiply in the term in the front to give you this expression. Now I'm going to show you the other way. If I give you an expanded form, how do we go back to a bracketed form? This is known as factorizing. And is probably the most crucial topic in algebra. The process of factorizing is to write an expression as a product of factors. Factors meaning numbers which multiply together to give you a desired result. So for example, 3 is a factor of this, and this bracket is a factor of this. Let me show you how to do it. So say I gave you 18x plus 3 to start with. If I want to factorize it, the first thing we would do is look at the numbers first. And keep in mind, this is linear expressions. When it comes to quadratics, it's a little bit different. But for linear expressions like this, you would just look at the numbers first. And you would say, what number do I know goes into both 18 and 3? The answer is 3. Then you look at the letters. Well, in terms of these two, there's only x in one of them. If there was an x in both, then we could say there's a factor of an x. But because there's only an x in one of these, not this one, we can only say that 3 is a factor of both of these two terms. We open up this bracket and we say, how many 3's go into 18? The answer is 6. Then there's still that x there. Then plus. How many 3's go into 3? The answer is 1. And that's factorized. 10x plus 25xy. So the first thing we're going to do, look at the numbers. What number, or what's the largest number that you know of, which goes into both 10 and 25? The answer is 5. Then we're going to look at the letters in both terms. What letter do you see in both? I see an X, and that is common, so I can take it out of the bracket. Let's open my bracket now. How many 5's go into 10? The answer is 2. Don't forget, I factorized out an x. What I've said is that there is an x in both terms, and you essentially cross them out. So we're left with no x's left, it's just 2. Plus, how many 5's go into 25? The answer is 5, and then there's still that y left. And that is factorized. It's homework time. On the board, you have a cuboid with dimensions length, width, height. I've given you the volume is 16xy plus 10x squared y. I want you to tell me what are the possible dimensions for this cuboid. So you have to think about how do you work out the volume of a cuboid. And also, guys, just as a little tip, it's to do with what we were just talking about. So if you want me to produce the solutions for this, in the comments, I want you to comment algebraice, and I'll make sure I get it done for you guys. And going back to my original problem, you take a number, x, this is how I'm using algebra, an unknown number, it could be whatever you want. I said double it. Doubling means multiplying it by 2. Remember in algebra we don't need to write the multiplication symbol. 2x. Then I told you to add 2. Add 2. And then I told you to divide that number by 2. Why does that simplify to 1 more than the number you are thinking of? Well, simply, we just divide both of these numbers by 2. So this is known as splitting the fraction. So 2x divided by 2, the 2's just cancel. We're left with x. Then here, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Don't forget the plus. And there, guys, you can see it's 1 more than your original number. Nice. If you're enjoying the long-form content like this, then hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this.